second and ten. Quick wide to the right side. Woodruff top of the screen wide left. Jaworski goes airborne. Right corner of the end zone. Mike Quick was spun around at the five and no flag. That time they had double coverage on Quick. When you think of double coverage, you think of it's going to be two defensive backs on a wide receiver. But you see Monty Coleman taking Quick short. Darrell Green has him deep. Quick still breaks it out to the corner on a corner route. And still has him open, but the connection of timing is not there on the plug. As a wide receiver, what could you do when you're facing double coverage? Well, you have to see where that double coverage is coming from. In the case where it's coming from on quick, with the linebacker coming out to help with the defensive backs, it's pretty tough to get off the line. Your first concern is to get off the line. Shotgun for Jaworski on third and ten. Wilbert Montgomery in as a wide receiver. Deflected at the 15-yard line. Back there on the coverage for Washington was Curtis Jordan. His confidence been all week. Well, I guarantee you Paul McFadden has been thinking about that, that block extra point all week long. He couldn't wait to get a chance out here. And he's getting it early for the Philadelphia Eagles. A field goal attempt. Here. Ron Jaworski will put it down at the 33. It's a 40, uh, 30, check it, a 43-yard field goal try. 43 out of the hold of Jaworski. Eagles lead 3 nothing. His confidence was just fine. So the two Youngstown Staters, Ron Jaworski, who's been a big inspiration to Paul McFadden all season long, talked to him this week and he said very pointedly, look, let's not let that blocked extra point get in the way of the rest of our season. Jaworski's hold, McFadden's kick, and the Eagles lead 3 nothing after the Mike Nelms fumble. Man, is lay down, break down, birdie on the hot side of town. He likes it. Like beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer. <laughs> and left. Football's top passers will be on display. Heisman Trophy candidate Doug Flutie leading the Boston College Eagles against Bernie Kosar and the Miami Hurricanes. I'd like to try to face the same play defense in that one. That's at 2.30 Eastern time. Then on Saturday, Notre Dame and the Fighting Irish invading the Coliseum in Los Angeles to take on the Rose Bowl bound Trojans of USC. That's Saturday at 3.30 Eastern time and it's all on CBS. Heisman looks over first and ten from his own 25. And he's got Calvin Mohammed up near the 30-yard line for a pickup of five. It's second and four. Three, four, led by Dennis Harrison and Ken Clark in the middle. Ken Clark having the Pro Bowl season. Linebackers, the man in the middle there, Mike Reichenbach, replacing Jerry Robinson. And the secondary, missing your old nemesis, Roynell Young. Yes, but they got one of my other old nemesis there, Herm Edwards, there in the secondary. Heisman bends in on third and a long two. Out of the pocket, and he slides for a first down. This is what bothered Marion Campbell all week. He said, look, Heisman killed us in the first game. We held him as far as his passing stats were concerned, but in that first meeting, a 20-0 Washington uh, whitewash, Heisman ran for, what, 50 cents? One game behind Washington and Dallas. <laughs> Tony Woodruff bumped down at the 42, but that's a first down for Philadelphia. Rich Mallott out of Penn State was back on the coverage. But Tony Woodruff with five catches last week against the Dolphins, just a little out. Over the middle, and it's Spagnola, and Spagnola barrels inside the Redskin 40 for a first down. John Spagnola out of Yale in his fifth year. The leading Philadelphia receiver came in with 44 catches. Well, the Eagles, last time these two teams played, they shut down Mike Quick to Washington Redskin defense. So the Eagles say, we're going to go to our tight ends a little bit in this game. They go to Spagnola, the leading receiver for the Eagles this year, and he turns it into a big game. And you mentioned going to the tight end, something Philadelphia could not do last year. Of course, John was out a year ago. He was a patient, not a player, recuperating from cervical disc surgery in his neck. Could have been a career-ending injury. Jaworski hands off to Wilbert Montgomery. And little number 31, Sutter steps to the 35-yard line for a pickup of... Fans have climbed back into it. First of all, they intercepted a pass, and that led to this touchdown run by James Jones. And now it is 10-7, Chicago still in the lead. Back to Jeff. Well, Brent, you know there's one thing that Monty Clark's team will not do, and that's quit. They were behind last week 28-0 to these Redskins. They came back and cut it down to a 28-14 deficit. Three times were inside the Redskins' 20-yard line and came out with no points. 
Here goes Montgomery again. Nowhere to run. Boy, the close football and the skins have got it. Only Montgomery's third carry of the game. Great defensive job by the skins to string it out. And Charles Mann, big number 71, covered that loop, New Jersey. All right. You wore number 15 back then, right? That's right. Joe Ward, number seven, of course. Third and three. Didier in motion. Didier dies for a Washington first down. Clint Didier. Of course, Thanksgiving and football go hand in hand, and we've got a good game for you from Pontiac to be the Lions and the Green Bay Packers. Packers have got their hands full with the Rams this afternoon, but Green Bay, they still think they've got a wild card possibility, maybe even a, a real shot at winning that NFC Central. Of course, the key thing right there, it's a noon start, so while you're basking in the little bubbly and cooking that turkey on Thanksgiving, watch Brent, Irv, Jimmy DeGreek, and the NFL Today, Thursday, here on CBS, shotgun for Jaworski. Incomplete and almost intercepted. Robert Montgomery just does not seem to be mentally in this football. Jaworski also hurt on the play. It's just a simple pass play. We got two players, a player on each side got hurt on the play. Jaworski must have got a finger in the eye or something. He's really hot. He's screaming at Jim Tunney, wondering where the roughing the passer call is. I think he got a finger in the eye, and that's very painful, believe me. I've, I've had it. I've experienced it. Redskins just awesome on defense. They ran Gary Danielson's bell last week. Gary hardly remembered the first half. Well, the Redskins have a very aggressive defense. They have a take pride in hitting and knocking people out of the games, especially Philadelphia Eagles or Dallas Cowboys or New York Giants, anybody in the NFC East. Daryl Green is down at the 43 of Philadelphia over in front of the Eagles bench. Jaworski being attended to out there by the Philadelphia medical staff and Jim Tunney has indicated we're at the two-minute warning. A 43-yard Paul McFadden field goal and a four-yard touchdown toss, Theismann to Didier, 7-3. Redskins on top, two minutes to go before halftime. Gastineau. New York Jets defensive lineman, very active in children's hospital work. Jaworski will hold for Paul McFadden to pull Philadelphia to within a point. A 34-yard attempt by the barefoot rookie out of Youngstown State. Hash mark near side, and the crowd will tell you. 7-6 Washington as we head to halftime. One second left on the clock. You know, as you look at Paul McFadden over there, his teammates were so enthused and so encouraging all week long because it could have been such a tough week for the young kicker after having that extra point blocked, but he said everybody was just wonderful. But you know, the press and everybody else, the fans, everybody else is going to get on you for, for missing something like that, but one, one group of people you look for for comfort, and he got that, was from his teammates, and that was a big plus for Paul McFadden. That's why his confidence is still up and why he has two field goals here today. I asked him if he heard from his parents at all, and he said, you know, he said, my brother was watching the game on a satellite dish and had to relay the information home. When he called home, it was like somebody had died in the family. Everybody was so down, but they got back up this week. McFadden, a very soft-spoken young man and a former Youngstown State Penguin along with Ron Jaworski. I wonder how it feels kicking with no shoe or no sock on Well, he's the second weather. barefoot boy in Philadelphia. Tony Franklin was set packing up to Foxborough and the Patriots. You know, when he kicked in college his freshman year, he kicked with a sock on. His last three years was really when he developed the uh, the barefoot routine. And you know, he saw Tony Franklin kicking barefoot on television. That's what gave him the idea. One second left. Eagles don't want to have a big return, so they'll kick the squib kick, and it goes to number 35 for the Skins, Keith Griffin, the rookie out of Miami of Florida, who gets chased out of bounds in front of the Eagle bench. We're at halftime. The Washington Redskins, a touchdown pass. Joe Theismann to Clint Didier for seven points and two Paul McFadden field goals for the Eagles. 7-6 Washington scores and highlights with Brennan Irv coming up. Keeping weekend feast on CBS Sports beginning Thursday with a traditional NFL matchup between the Green Bay Packers and the Detroit Lions. Friday, college football. Heisman candidate Doug Flutie will lead Boston College against Miami. Saturday, coverage of NCAA basketball tips off with Louisville against Indiana. Then Notre Dame and USC renew their spirited football tradition. Sunday, an NFL doubleheader featuring San Francisco against New Orleans. All Thanksgiving weekend on CBS Sports. 
you're an Eagle fan, you're wondering about that call. We'll take another look at it. But first of all, some of the other scores now around the league. The Dallas Cowboys with their hands full up in Buffalo. Still 7-3. And it was Greg Bell who gave the Bills their touchdown against Tom Landry and the Cowboys. The number one draft choice out of Notre Dame goes 85 yards. This is the longest run from scrimmage in the league this year. And so far, it is the only touchdown that has been scored in that game. Gary Hogaboom, quarterbacking the Cowboys right now, who are behind 7-3. Seattle and Cincinnati and the Red Hot Seahawks are rolling over the Bengals. 17-3 in the raw weather in Cincinnati. They are at the half. Cleveland over Atlanta. The count there is 13-7. The Rams and the Red Hot Green Bay Packers. And the Packers on the move again. It is 14-6. They are in the second quarter of the action in that contest. And, of course, Detroit and Chicago. The Bears with a three-game lead. 10-7. The Bears are over the Lions. Steve Fuller has replaced the injured Jim McMahon. He was flushed on the shotgun here and turns it into a nice game. Uh, really learned player. He couldn't find anybody out of the field. Went right up the gut and scrambled all the way down to the one-yard line. Brent setting up a scoring opportunity for his teammates. But they had to go to fourth down in which to get it. And on the roll, Fuller looks for Dunsmore, and he's got it. And it went to 7-0. But then after an intercepted pass, Monty Clark got a break, and he cashed in. As Jones, who has had to pick up a lot of that slack left by the injury to Billy Sims, crashes in. 10-7 Bears lead there at the half of that game. New England, Indianapolis, and the storyline here is Tony Eason. Three times today, he has hit Ramsey for touchdowns. Four yards, 25 yards, and 26 yards. Washington and Philadelphia. Let's take another look at that controversy. 7-6, Redskins over the Eagles. Now, of course, as you know, John Riggins has been slowed up by the Eagles, especially inside the 10-yard line. A rare fumble by Big John right here. The Eagles take the ball away. All right, here it comes now. Irv, tell us about this play. Boy, the Eagles are called roughing the kicker. And it's like this. Mosley kicks the kick away. Here comes the defender. Blocked into Mosley. Mosley sits on him. You know what our director said? He said, Mosley's a better actor than Feisman on that play. <laughs> That gave the Redskins a first and goal, and Theismann cashed in, going to Didier. Philadelphia came back with a second field goal, and it is 7-6 right now. The Skins with the lead. St. Louis and the Giants, an important game. The loser could be out of playoff contention, and the Cardinals hold the lead right now. Watch Neil Lomax here. Can't find a receiver, and folks, he smells Lawrence Taylor. Yeah, I'd get down, too. I'll tell you that. The Sheik missed another field goal for the Giants. This one, off to the right. Bill Parcells on the Giants' sideline, unhappy by that circumstance. And then a beautiful bootleg by Neil Lomax. Great play Great on the play. goal line. Great play, Brent. Aggressive defense. You know, the defense will be running stuff out of it. All right. And the NFL Today continues on CBS after these messages from your local stations. the punter had a shot at him. Anthony Washington from Fresno State could not catch up. The longest return for a touchdown off a kickoff was by Billy Canfield for 92 yards against Detroit back in 79, an 89-yard effort, and he brought this sellout crowd at Veterans Stadium to their feet. Redskins are so stunned, they only had 10 men out there for the extra point try. Well, they should be stunned because this is uncharacteristic for the Washington Redskins. They have a breakdown in their special team, especially a breakdown that cost them six points. McFadden, who's had three field goals, and the extra point is good. This crowd is electrified, and what? About the 25-yard line, he looked like Drew Pearson on the dance floor. His feet were moving so well. Well, they got everybody going one way. The, the Redskins did not have a good pursuit angle on Andre Waters. You've got everybody in the pile, and look at that move there he makes. Uh, breaks that one tackle. All there is is Jeff Hayes to outrun. Anthony Washington will come in the picture, but he can't bring down Andre Waters. 89-yard kickoff return. Gets this crowd right back in the game. He was a four-year letterman at Cheney State as a defensive back. Four-year letterman at Pahokee High School in Pahokee, Florida. He was in the Army Reserve in 81 and 82. Showed some speed there, too. Anthony Washington couldn't catch him. Boy, what a thrill for 
Cowboy rookie year. Tight game. NFC East battle. Washington, Philadelphia, and he runs a kickoff back 89 yards to give his team back the lead 16 to 10. You don't think he'll get a game ball. Right now, the concern all over the faces of Joe Theismann and Joe Gibbs, they knew coming in they would have their hands full after looking at films of the Eagles against the Dolphins. Well, they're thinking now what they got to do to get back in this football game, get their football team back on top. They're not going to panic yet. There's only five minutes left in the third quarter. Still got a lot of football to play. And Pat, the barefoot boy, the rookie from Youngstown State, a high end of the red kick taken by Nell across the 25. Down at the 26-yard line and listen to the crowd. A big double header week by second down and eight. Good pursuit by Greg Brown. Sporting News. And it pointed out Greg Brown wasn't going to be pushed around anymore. Well, Greg Brown said he had enough of Joe, Joe Jacoby, 300 pounds. So Greg Brown went out and beefed up to 260 pounds. And he doesn't get pushed around anymore. We, we told Greg Brown about that newspaper clipping. He said, I didn't know Jacoby admired me that much. <laughs> Six defensive backs in for the Eagles. Theismann unloads. He's got Didier at the 35. And Didier is pounded backwards. The first Eagle to get there was number 48. Wes Hopkins helped out by Ray Ellis. Boy, what some fierce hitting going on. These Eagles are fired up. It's a short pass to Didier. He caught this pass all through the first half. But he can't hold on this time. It gets leveled by Ray Ellis. Excuse me, Wes Hopkins. Should have known. Wes Hopkins in on that hit along with Herm Edwards. This is a very physical football game, Jim. Hayes and what he's done this afternoon. It is always difficult to beat the same team twice in the same season, especially if you shut them out, if you humiliate them the first time. That revenge mode, and the Eagles told us about that. They were bad this week. Well, that's what happens in the NFC East. You have these types of battles. Whatever happens in the first game, throw it out the window because we got a new encounter here. Great hang time by Hayes. Cooper catches the ball at the 33. Philadelphia retains possession. It'll be first and 10 for Jaworski and company. We've got a dandy going on at Sold Out Veterans Stadium. The Eagles by six over Washington, but we've got a long way to go. 3.06 left to go, third quarter. Three generations with blanket protection for their lives, homes, families, cars, and businesses. Nationwide is on your side. This telecast presented by the authority of the National Football League. It's intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the Philadelphia Eagles and the National Football League prohibited. 10-41 left to go in this football game. A six-point Philadelphia lead. The stats on Ron Jaworski. Hubie Oliver, the rock man. United Way across the country. I'm John Spagnuolo of the Philadelphia Eagles. My love affair with these children started when I visited this agency as a United Way volunteer. I want to tell you about just one child. Her name is Julie. In 1971, she heard sound for the first time in an agency just like this. But that wasn't the end of her story. Today, she's a track star winning medals, and she has a dream to someday be running for the gold as an Olympic hopeful. Julie Barty! And now I'd like you to meet Julie. Here she communicates as a United Way volunteer, helping children who face the same challenges she faced. With your help, I know they're going to make it. So thanks, because thanks to you, it works for all of us. The United Way. I love you. This message furnished by the National Football League. They have just fixed the clock here at Veterans Stadium. It was out for one play. There is the time remaining. And, of course, the Redskins with two timeouts left. Coming up next, Brent Irv and Jimmy the Greek for the NFL postgame show. Scores and highlights from around the NFL today. And there are some big upsets. Buffalo over the Cowboys. Try that one on. The Giants stuffing St. Louis. There'll be a log jam again in the NFC East. Theismann trying to pull it out. Unloads, and it is dropped at the 43 of Philadelphia. Then that streak will continue. Theismann looks at third and two. Good protection. Incomplete and almost it is. And then dropped again. A hot potato that Anthony Griggs tried to run with before pulling it in. It's the old 
volleyball drill. The wide receiver batted it up in the air. A couple of Eagles had a shot at it, and Briggs could not pull it down. Well, it looked like they were playing volleyball on this play. They're trying to go to Don Warren on the play. It hits him. He drops it. That's one. Get the linebacker, Reichenbach, there. That's two. Jody Schultz, three. Briggs, four. Almost pulls it in. Five. He touched it twice. <laughs> The ball game on the do not. Jeff Moore is the running back. Didier wide left. Mohammed wide to the right with Art Monk. Redskin need two yards for a first down or turn out the right. First down, Washington into Eagle territory at the Philadelphia 49. Jeff Moore. Theismann in a hurry up offense. Two timeouts left. Big clutch play. Big play by Jeff Moore. New addition to the Redskins coming over from the San Francisco 49ers. Six defensive backs in for Philadelphia. Bernard Wilson and Roynell Young. Theismann backpedal. Fires over the middle. That's a great catch by Art Monk. Eagles are saying it's not a catch, but I think it is. It was Philadelphia will go 5-6-1. The Redskins will go to 7-5. And, and that NFC Central is going to be a mess. Working uh, Art Monk inside man on this pass pattern and working him to the outside. You see Albert Fowles trailing him. Monk has nothing on the outside there, but Fowles tries to get it in. Nothing doing this time. Four seconds left to go, but the Eagles avenging a 20-0 whitewash at RFK Stadium at the hands of Washington earlier this year. So Philadelphia goes to 5-6-1. The Redskins will drop down to 7-5. Dallas was being beaten by Buffalo. That means the Cowboys will be 7-5. The Giants were beating Philadelphia. Brent and Herb will have scores, standings, and highlights coming up on the NFL postgame show. It's been a wild and woolly one here, and it's a wild day around the NFL. Ron Jaworski will fall on the ball, and this game is just about into the record book. The Eagles win by six. The difference in the game, three field goals by the rookie, Paul McFadden, and an 89-yard kickoff return by the rookie out of Cheney State, Andre Waters. Philadelphia by six against the Skins. We'll return to a sold-out veteran stadium in just a moment. Pretty performance by Philadelphia defensively, forcing six turnovers by the Redskins. Well, it was a great defensive effort by the Philadelphia Eagles. It's like the Philadelphia Eagles defensive old. They give you a lot of yards, but they wouldn't break. They really held tough, and they really put some pressure on Joe Theismann and made it tough for him this afternoon. Theismann, three interceptions. Riggins with two fumbles, six turnovers altogether. 124 yards in penalties against the Washington Redskins, the most by a Joe Gibbs coach team. 16-10, to 10, the Eagles on top over the Redskins. The NFL postgame show continues. We go to New York, and here's Brent Musburger. All right, we welcome the Washington Philadelphia audience. They have joined this post-game show, too. The big story right now. Less than a minute to go up there in Dallas. The Cowboys have not scored a touchdown. If that score holds, it will be the first time since 1979 against the Steelers that the Cowboys have not scored at least one touchdown. Greg Bell of the Bills has rushed for more than 200 yards. The first time anybody's hit the Cowboys for 200 yards since 1963. Three. All right, the other scores now, and finals are starting to come in. The Seahawks continue to roll and set sail after the Broncos. It's 26-6, a final over the Bengals there. Cleveland comes up a winner. They sacked the quarterback this afternoon 11 times. Atlanta with a very long season now in front of them, and the Rams lose to the Packers. But the Packers have won for the fourth straight time. 31-6 over the Rams, but they cannot gain ground on the Chicago Bears. Bob Thomas kicks a last-second field goal, 16-14. The Bears over the Lions, and the Bears now have a three-game lead in the NFC Central. They're closing in on a home field advantage in the divisional playoffs. New England, 43. The Colts, 17. Frank Cush starts a third different quarterback in as many weeks. Today it was Arch Schleister's turn. Tony Eason with four touchdown passes, three of them the Derek Ramsey, 4, 25, and 26 yards. Philadelphia over Washington, of course, 16-10 is the final there in that game. And the Giants come away with a 16-10 victory. These games are just underway, scoreless for the 49ers. The Jets have scored on Houston, 7-0 over the Oilers. Miami and San
San Diego. And let us now at 14-3, Bills over the Cowboys. Time running down. The Bills closing in on their first win of the season as the clock runs down. And let's listen now to the crowd up there in Buffalo. And so the Dallas Cowboys find themselves in a three-way tie for first place with the Washington Redskins and the New York Giants in the NFC East. And the St. Louis Cardinals fall back by a game and the Philadelphia Eagles are going to be saying, oh, why couldn't we have gotten the Dolphins in overtime? The Jets score. They have put a touchdown on the board, added the extra point down in Houston. They lead the Oilers 7-0. These other games just underway. Miami, can they keep that winning streak alive? Scoreless against San Diego in the first quarter. They, of course, are out on the West Coast. The Raiders trying to end that three-game losing streak. They are tied with the Chiefs. That game out in the Coliseum. And one other game underway, of course. The Broncos have struck first on the Vikings. It's 7-0. We'll have that update for you. Let's take a look at what happened as the Denver Broncos have to keep winning because the Seattle Seahawks are trying to close in on them. And they struck first against the Minnesota Vikings. We'll have that play for you in just a moment as we continue here on CBS. Earl Wilhite scores the first touchdown against the Vikings, a little bit of a delay, off to the left side, busts on into the end zone, they add the extra point out there in Mile High Stadium, and it is 7-0 now, the Broncos lead the Vikings. The big story, of course, is in the NFC East, we've got a three-way tie for first place, the Giants have climbed back in by beating the Cardinals 16-10, the Cardinals fall a game back, both the Cowboys and the Redskins lose, and let's send it out to Pat and John, and Pat, let's see if you can sort out the wild NFC East. For us. Well, not really, Brent. We're still trying to put it together and try to figure out who the teams have got left to play. John, what do you think? Well, of course, I've always felt that the Redskins had the best schedule, but as, as you find out today, it doesn't make, make anything. Uh, you know, the Cowboys go up, they lose to Buffalo, the Redskins lose to Philadelphia, the Giants lost last week to Tampa Bay. They come back, they're in it. I don't think you figure it out. I think you just sit back and relax and enjoy the rest of the season. I think we plan to do that. We had a chance to talk to Phil Simms, the Giant quarterback, just after the game was over. You know, it's been a very difficult month for the Giants. They played the Cowboys, they beat them. They played the Redskins, they beat them. Then they lost to Tampa, and now today they beat the Cardinals. They said they had hoped to win three out of four, but they didn't know which three out of four. Here's what Phil Simms had to say about the development. We're to be realistic about that. <laughs> Five, six, and one. I agree. We're headed for the last Sunday. The big upset, as far as that division is concerned, has to be the Dallas Cowboys not even scoring a touchdown against the winless Buffalo Bills. Now, Jack Kemp, of course, he had his number retired up there in Buffalo, the congressman, and then the Bills exploded. It was Greg Bell, their number one draft choice out of Notre Dame. 85 yards, and on the day, 27 carries. Rushed for 206. First man to hit the Cowboys with better than 200 yards rushing since Jimmy Brown in 63. He also scored the second touchdown. Joe Ferguson swinging it out there to Bell, and Gary Ogaboom could not get the job done. And what an afternoon for Kay Stevenson, who was under fire up there in Buffalo. Now, let's send you back to Buffalo. Well, Hank said that if the, the Dallas Cowboys don't come in really concerned about the Buffalo Bills, they're going to be caught short, and they were, and Hank, and you, and you said Buffalo had to run, and they did, and we have Greg Bell down on the field. Well, I tell you, it was very important for me to have a good game because, you know, the weather is bad up here, and it's very cold, and uh, we needed a rushing game, and uh, it felt great just really to get the, you know, the first win for the veterans in. Of course, the drama continues to unfold around the league. Already set out there. It's going to be Ohio State, which won yesterday, taking on USC. Now in the Cotton Bowl, Boston College has made that its first choice. Texas must meet Baylor and beat them, along with Texas A&M. They'll be there. The Orange Bowl will be Washington or South Carolina. 
Carolina, as it now appears, against the winner of next Saturday's Oklahoma-Oklahoma State game, the Sugar Bowl. Nebraska now has the inside track there. Florida, if it gets the approval from the SEC, remember they're going on probation, they could still knock the Gators out. It could be Florida-Nebraska, but if it's not Florida, LSU or Auburn will wind up going to the Sugar Bowl in that situation. Now we have another the New England Patriots route the Colts 50-17. to The Patriots are now 8-4, and, and they've got a shot at a one. And it was Steve.